All right, here we are for our first round after a bit of a wait trying to actually get into a modern event. Um, this hand is pretty bad. Uh, we don't have any acceleration, no interaction, and our first play is turn three lingering souls. Not really good enough for modern, so we're going to go ahead and mulligan this. Um, now we have no land, so we're going to mulligan this as well. Uh, and this hand is actually okay as far as, uh, as far as, you know, five card hands go. We have you know, land into bird into smiter potentially. So unfortunately our opponent is on seven, um, we're getting probed. So uh, probe is generally indicative of storm these days. Though it's a weird turn one play. I'm not really sure what, what my opponent's actually on. It could be, it could be like something like uh, delve, wooded foothills. Okay, well that, that does look like a, uh, some sort of graveyard deck. Oh, okay, Infect. There we go. Well, this is not a good hand against Infect. We have no interaction. Um, we may just, you know, die pretty much instantly. <laughs> Another probe. Opponent is doing a lot of damage to himself. Pendlehaven, alright. How much damage you got for me? Alright, we have been infected. I'm just going to go ahead and play this smiter. I don't particularly want to block here, but I'm dead to just about anything, so I think I may have to. <laughs> like, being able to actually pressure him, he's at 13. Close enough is blockable, so if he pumps with Pendlehaven then attacks, I die to uh, become immense. Do I die to become immense? He doesn't have enough for to become immense yet. So this is 3 4. Uh, I don't think I can really win by by uh, by blocking. I, no, I die to. Yeah, I die to everything. I guess I just have to block. I die to like Vines of the Vastwood. I die to you know, any pump spell at all. Mutagenic growth, there we go. I would not have died to that, actually. <laughs> well, I'm gonna die to that. This turn, so. But yeah, I, you know, the, the, I double mulligan and have no, uh, no interaction here. It's gonna be pretty hard to actually win. This is one of the situations where uh, I would definitely be, be happy to zealous persecution my opponent on this board. But I'm pretty sure I'm just dead to this blighted agent. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't actually play any pump effect. And I'm just gonna play both of these guys. I, you know, I die to anything, but I already did die to anything. sure what I uh, what I have to draw at this point <clears throat> literally any basically any card in this deck kills me that isn't just like a creature <laughs> Yep, I'm dead. 
So, uh, and you know, whatever. I, I double mulliganed, and he had he was in the play with the totally reasonable draw. Not real all that much I can I can hope to be doing here. But we're gonna board in our better interaction here. Um, Cyborg wise, uh, Siege Rhino comes out because the life to you know, the life gain and, and kitchen things. These are both pretty weak. Um, I actually like uh, Pride Mage here because of. Uh, because of Inkmoth Nexus is actually pretty powerful there, uh, so just removing a, a bit of the a bit of the, the like larger you know, clunkier creatures. Voice is I think worse than Smiter just because it doesn't hit as hard. Uh, the fact that it can block and like uh, leave a guy behind if your opponent is attacking you with a uh, a Glistener Elf is you know pretty attractive. But I don't think I really need you know much more. It's not like it's not like we are uh, this is a matchup where we're fighting against removal really. Uh, we are potentially fighting against Twisted Image, which is really annoying on our mana creatures, but overall I think that this is just how I want to set it up with, you know, as much disruption and removal as possible and just sort of large threats and some of the threats that do double as uh, as removal. So let's go ahead and submit. Taking his sweet time, actually sideboarding. All right, we're gonna go ahead and play first. Um, this is an okay hand. We've no acceleration. We do have Pride Mage and Path. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this. It's not like I said. It's not great, but um, it's okay. We do have a removal spell, and Pride Mage is, is you know a reasonable uh, reasonable early play just because we can actually. Uh, we can actually use it to kill a nexus, and it can you know present some sort of clock as well. So we play the verdant catacomb first. We are potentially going to just fetch and get a godless shrine. Gonna spew life points. They're not the most valuable in this matchup. Kind of just want to path the blighted agent right now. Um, so it can't get, uh, it can't get uh, protected. And Pride Mage is actually also pretty good against Wild Defiance, which is uh, another card that is a. Uh, a very real threat out of these decks. Right now with a double pride mage and my opponent only have a nexus for a for a poison threat. It's actually pretty nice. There's wild defiance. So can my opponent kill me if I play Smiter? If I play Whitley Fleet Rather and just attack him for eight, can activate this. Like, yeah, I probably should leave mana up, up. So I probably should play Smiter this turn and attack him just for four. I 
I don't think I want to kill Wild Defiance. I think I just want to... I could actually just play Voice. If I just play Voice and attack him for 4, and then I can attack him for 12, yeah. So Voice actually leaves it so that I am... I don't know. I should still leave... Because Voice means that, that I can uh, uh, I can kill this, and he can't Vines it. Yeah, I think that might be right. Because he has, like... Vines and he has like vines plus um, plus uh, what is it? I could also just kill this, just kill wild, attack him for four, kill wild, defines play smiter, and then I'm not really. This isn't really threatening. That's actually probably better because attack him for four, it puts him at um, that puts him at eleven, and then smiter plus this, that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now that, that, that's not quite lethal next turn. So maybe I don't want to kill this, maybe I want to play play voice and just attack him for four. I think I'm going to do that. This means that Wiltleaf Liege is lethal next turn. And I have both Pride Mages to potentially kill the Nexus if he attacks me with it and pumps it to some sort of scary uh, scary amount. Alright, no attacks. So now he has to block. And we have a Pride Mage up. You can like activate Nexus, block. Okay, he's just blocking there, that's fine. Put into three, say go. And now again, you know, he needs to be able to attack with this and pump it and uh, pump it enough and not and have a protection spell against Pride Mage. And it looks like he's conceding. Hasn't quite popped up yet, but it says the game's ended in the left. So so there's, you know, Pride, Pride Mage is a card that um, in, in a lot of cases just doesn't really seem uh, like it's you know an incredible card because well you know I was just a two two in a lot of a lot of matches but there are so many situations where Pride Mage is just really 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 powerful and offers just like a, a sort of versatility that uh, you don't really get from a lot of other things that I think that it, it deserves more consideration than it often gets uh, in modern decks. <clears throat> So going to game three, not really going to change anything. Uh, this hand is has no th no real threats, um, but has double thought season and chalice and a township. So if I draw any threat, I'm going to go ahead and keep this. I think that. Unless my opponent plays turn one Glisten or Elf, um, I should have you know the ability to Thought Seize like uh, something out of his hand, and we have the Chalice. So I may have a Glisten or Elf here, but we have we have Thought Seizes and okay, Noble Hierarch. So that's pretty good for me. And we drew a Persecution. We will pay two life. Yes, we will Thought Seize him. What you got over there? We will take Blighted Agent. So he has Might of Old Crosa and Tomb Land. So I'm just going to Thought Seize. We're going to take Vines and leave him with Might. So 
So right now our chalice actually kind of stinks because we have our own path that we want to cast. <laughs> And we are <laughs> potentially going to get beat down by just this guy. <laughs> we don't draw some sort of creature, but... There's a Noble Hierarch. Alright, we're safe. So I don't really want to cast Chalice here, because I do have Path, and uh, if not, you know, I'm not under any sort of actual threat. Twisted Image. Um, so I'm going to Zealous Persecution him which will save my guy. And it'll make him use his Might of Old Cursa. Yeah. Oh, he didn't use, so he kept his Might of Old Cursa, he didn't save his guy. So no his hand is exactly my old Chrissa. There's a bird. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play my bird. And attack him with Noble Hierarch. And I don't think I want to play my chalice just yet. Because I have this path, and I want to be able to path a creature he plays. I wonder if he has if he has carrying call. I know that that Tom Ross had carrying call against me um, at the Pro Tour. I'm gonna play Godless Shrine. I could play Godless Shrine and take two, and we can attack with our bird, uh, uh, our Noble Hierarch, and keep uh, path up just in case. It is odd sitting here playing around Carrion Call, but it's the world that we live in. Try it Arbor, okay. I guess he could have cast something else on it. Ooh, I can play Whitley Fleege and Chalice for one. I guess there was no real reason for me to path that then, but he he like had probably had another another spell that he was looking to cast on it. Uh, so I can attack, and my attack is lethal. There we go. So there, you know, we saw that Chalice was a little awkward because we, you know, had a reactive card in our hand that we needed to find an opportunity to use before we could play it. Um, but, you know, ultimately we just were able to use our disruption to handle his early plays um, and ultimately just found any threat, you know, in our deck and were able to take it down. So uh, I think that this, this deck feels like it's pretty reasonable against Infect. I mean, they can obviously have their, you know, sort of explosive draws, but having uh, both you know, a bunch of uh, a bunch of discard effects, well, a bunch, you know, four thought seizes after sideboarding, uh, as well as just cheap interaction, and Lingering Souls in particular is very good against Infect because they try and beat you with, you know, Ink Moth Nexus and uh, 
and such, but we didn't even draw those and we managed to win the game. So anyway, uh, let's head to the next round.